Nelson's column, Abolishing the House of Lords could cause UK political system to unravel. It may seem like the Lords belong to an older form of democracy, but if bishops are chucked out it could lead to a separation of church and state. Let's imagine Kim Jong-un really does want peace with Donald Trump's America, has had enough of doing in uncles with anti-aircraft guns and asks you and I to design a parliamentary democracy for North Korea. A House of Lords wouldn't be part of it, right? Right. An unelected second chamber would be absurd. That's for old democracies, not new ones. But our unwritten constitution came out of 800 years of evolution, not the revolutions which recreated America and France. So tinkering with it will have unforeseen results and plunge us into a constitutional black hole. I'm no cheerleader for the Lords, but I recognize our political system could unravel without it. Change is needed, though. Its 780 members are 180 too many and cost pound 100 million a year, enough to fund 4,000 more nurses. Some peers are lazy ba. Er. Barons, only popping in for a snifter in the subsidized bars to claim their 305 pounds daily allowance. No wonder a petition to give them their marching orders received 166,000 signatures and a poll shows 76% of voters think they're out of tune with mere mortals. But it's still not reason enough to scrap them altogether. Tory Grandi John Wackham's Royal Commission into Lords Reform noted how ridiculous it is for clergy to be parliamentarians and therefore legislators as of right. That's how it is in Iran. But he warned of unpredictable consequences of chucking bishops out. Church and state might separate removing the Queen as head of the Church of England. That could take away a cornerstone of the monarchy and could lead to its abolition. A case of throwing the baby out with the Bishop of Bath and Wells's holy water. Replacing the Lords with an elected Senate would weaken its revising role by making it a rubber stamp for MPs, which is what every PM wants. Senators would be in hock to their parties just as MPs are and the Senate's makeup would likely be little different to the Commons. We'd lose the expertise of Britain's most experienced brains, Robert Winston on health, former chief of the general staff Richard Dannat on defence, ex-Met Commissioner Ian Blair on policing. Brexit rebellions can only happen with independent thinking appointees who give bad law the scrutiny it should, while the elected commons still takes the big decisions. North Korea isn't democratic just because a despot in a pudding basin haircut boasts of 99.97% voter turnout. Modern Britain isn't undemocratic just because we can trace our constitution back to Magna Carta.